but played a lot smarter. Yeah, that's well said. Trying to find that fine line between physical and too aggressive. Here we go. The Bulldogs and the Spartans, a privilege to be courtside here in Charlotte. Winner of this game, on to the championship tilt tomorrow. Asheville team, 18, or 16 and two in the regular season. Winning the regular season championship by four games and a quick two nothing lead courtesy of Nick McMullen. Nick McMullen, definitely a load in the paint. Serves as a guy that can establish himself in the post, but also as a rim protector for the Bulldogs. Starting lineups presented by Sun Belt Reynolds in our first whistle. 34 seconds in, courtesy of Ken Pike, working with Bobby Leinberger and Corey Haney. Foul was on Fletcher A.B., the junior from Morganton. Yeah, Fletcher A.B. is going to have a tough task in having to guard Jordan Ganey, who is always on the move. They run him off of pin down, staggers and flares, and so you have to be active on the defensive end consistently. Trey Broadnax inbound to the ball, nearly turned it over, stole it back and scored. And then there was a collision between three different players under the bucket. That's what Broadnax brings to the table, his ability to play physical. Even on dead ball situations, finds a way. A.B. for three. Fletcher A.B. showing his ability to spread the floor. You normally, on UNC Astros roster, hear about Tajon Jones and Drew Pember, but he is also that third head to that monster that can make things happen for the Bulldogs. Great trap out there near the midcourt line by A.B. and Pember. See right here, Drew Pember, inside out. Draw the defense in. Fletcher A.B. gets a wide open three. Maybe only in four points. He was one for seven in the game yesterday. After he went seven for eight in the regular season finale, they beat Longwood by 10. This is an Asheville team that has won seven straight. They've won 16 of their last 17. Of course, the only loss in that stretch, John, was to you-know-who. Oh, yeah, Upstate definitely has the personnel to make life difficult for UNC Asheville if they are clicking on all cylinders. Upstate knocked off Asheville exactly one month ago. They won 76 to 70. It was exactly two weeks after Asheville had won by six in the mountains. First shot for Ganey. Trying to go high off the glass again from that angle. Yeah, I mean, the guy knows the glass. McMullen, the catch, the rejection. Great block from Njai. And Njai serves. And you can tell Upstate went bigger with their roster. They're accustomed to going small depending on who they're playing against. But there did a really good job of walling up against the post play of UNC Asheville. Tejon Jones called for the foul after he missed his first shot. Be the first on Tejon as you see Mike Morrell, the fifth year coach who has built this program from virtually scratch. Some very lean years in years one and two for Mike Morrell, but they let him continue to work and grind, and now this team has become a juggernaut in this league. Yeah, one of the originals on that team is Tejon Jones, right? One of those guys that was not, didn't have high expectations coming into UNC Asheville, but stayed in and stayed true, trusted the vision that Mike Morrell set for him, and has had a fantastic season. Friendly roll there for Trey Brodnax, who's got all four early for Upstate. And a foul against the Spartans inside. Dave Dickerson joined the Big South the exact same year Mike Morrell did. Yeah, his fifth year coaching the Spartans. Yeah, after a long, illustrious career as an assistant. Excuse me, John. <laughs> yeah, Coach Dickerson is definitely a player's coach. You see how those guys rally around him. Definitely one of those guys that has done the time, done the work, put in a ton of sweat equity, and those guys will run through a brick wall for him. Pember, tough shot, air ball. Kadarius Smith just in the game with his first rebound. Five-four Asheville. 
As Burgess drives and with the right hand missed the shot, Smith grabs another board. Good pace so far. Both teams are feeling each other out and getting down the floor and seeing if they can get things early. What is it about the makeup of this upstate team, do you think, that allowed them to play Asheville as well as anybody this year? Their guard play. You've got Ganey, you've got Broadnax, you've got Bailey, you've got Floyd Rideau Jr. You've got some high-level guards that don't get flustered by pressure. And Asheville does a really good job in their backcourt of applying a ton of pressure on your primary guard, making it tough for you to get in your offense. Us State does not feel rattled by that pressure. Spartans with three for five after that Smith fade away. And great defense, the deflection. Burgess, though, beats the buzzer after recovering the loose ball. Jordan Ganey, sophomore from Tucson, Arizona. 15 points a game. Smith finds his spot way off. Yeah, Smith was not in the rhythm. I've seen him knock down some shots in the past, but it's usually off of good rhythm and ball movement. Averaging about 13 points per game in his last five, up to scoring average to eight points for the season. Coming on strong down the stretch. Jones and Hember have been an incredible one-two punch. Long two, won't go. McMullen gets his hands on the board, surrounded by Spartans. He scores. Wow. Nick McMullen using those shoulders, clearing out the space he needed. That's a tough basket. Looking for Pember. Electric elevation. What a great defensive stop for UNC Asheville to get that fast break situation there. They've done a really good job of blitzing the screens and taking the one pass away. Mike Morrell is furious about that reach-in call that goes against Pember. You see foul in the game's first five minutes. Yeah, it's been really tight, and Asheville is going to have to make adjustments to make sure that they can keep their key pieces on the floor. Trey Brodnax, 12 points in the win over Gardner Webb yesterday. A game that, goodness, the Spartans snatched from the jaws of defeat. Down five points with 10 seconds left. Good start today, though. Brodnax has a quick six. Rodney is doing a great job of using his size advantage over Fletcher A.B. He's one of those guys that can really get going in a hurry in the paint. Drew Pember, for the sake of his size and strength, he's got some finesse to his game, too. It's his 12th consecutive game, making at least one three. It's disrespectful at this point to do a soft closeout on Drew Pember. <laughs> but it's, it, you got to figure out what you want. Do you want him blowing by you and getting to the basket? Or do you want to take test your luck with the three? After going just three of 11 from the field yesterday, two for four to start today. Rebound for A.B. Here comes Alex Caldwell. Story of yesterday's win over Charleston Southern was the free throw line. Bulldogs were 31 of 41 as a team. Pember individually made 22 free throws, setting a Big South tournament record. Going in the air without knowing where he was going. Doc Battle turns it over. Yeah, Doc Battle probably should have just stayed down on two feet there. Create a higher percentage for him to make a good pass. Way off on that three from Mr. Goodlow, who was huge down the stretch yesterday for Upstate. You see Drew Pember just recognizing that there was a weak closeout on him. He'll make you pay. Langless has to get out there, but he was so worried about his straight line drive because the thing is if Drew Pember gives a little baby pump fake and you edge up towards him, he's attacking that high foot. So if you're a guy like Pember and you average 31, uh, 33 minutes a game during the season, you played a game yesterday, your season's on the line, do you go into today's game thinking you're going to play more minutes than usual? Um, I think it's a situational thing. You still want to give the guy his rest because he is really good when he is fresh legged. Foul as the shot went up. It was on the screener. And you 
you see it. Floyd Riddell Jr. continuing to push upon McMullen there. Dave Dickerson amused, but not really. Caldwell showing his quickness to McMullen. Pretty good defensive trip for Upstate. Battle with four. Cross lane, McMullen didn't catch iron. It's a shot clock violation. And Upstate did a really good job basing off of the personnel that Asheville has on the floor. They were going to make sure that they kept the ball out of Tejon Jones' hands and really deny him and making it tough for him to get catches. And if he does catch it, they're under him on the catch so that he can't get to a rhythm three because he is one of the top three-point shooters in the conference. Beautiful cross-court pass sets up Goodlow. Rebound tracked in the corner by Nick Alves. It's been a couple of good plays to Mr. Goodlow, who's just missed the shot, but definitely capable of making that. Rito, too strong as well. A little nervy, these jump shots here. Yeah, because these guys can really shoot the ball. But Floyd Rideau Jr., Mr. Goodlow, Justin Bailey, Jordan Ganey, guys that can really shoot the ball. Just off on that jumper. Kayshawn Joes really gets some elevation when he shoots, doesn't he? He definitely does, and he's understood that he has had to do that, warding off bigger defenders that are trying to put a hand in his face. Jones listed at 6'5", but with the hair, he's like seven six feet. He's about 6'7 out here. They got to date that. The SID's got to date that. I looked at him the other day. He's about 6'6 now. Good low with the shot. And will be our second semifinal coming up 30 minutes after this one concludes on ESPN+. Plus. Championship game, 1 o'clock tomorrow on the Deuce. Drew Pember after a short breather before the under-12 timeout back in the game. Burgess circles the wagons, finds himself open, and comes up short with a teardrop. Burgess has had three opportunities for that teardrop and just has not been able to put enough oomph on it to get it into the basket. Upstate 5 for 12 from the floor. Nashville 6 of 14. Again, the clock winding down. Ganey, nope. Pember the rebound. Ganey still has not scored. He's 0 for 2. Ooh, defender went down trying to draw number 2 on Pember. Officials didn't bite. And McMullen tied up inside. The arrow gives it back to Upstate. And that's a... A tough play there. There was a lot of physicality that happened prior to that. And you see McMullen just battling, trying to maintain the ball. Yeah, that's a foul. Yeah, Bailey's over there going after it. And yeah, I agree with you. Justin Bailey had a good hold of the wrist as he <laughs> pursued the ball. Yeah. Burgess could have been caught for a foul bumping in the backcourt there against Goodlow. Well, I... I think you respond to what the refs are giving you. And so that's the situation where you're like, if we're going to play like that, we can play like that. This is schoolyard ball right now. I love it. Three is down for Justin Bailey. It was only a matter of time before the Spartans started to get some of that rust off, some of that those nerves off of their shoulders and knock down a, a rhythm three. They've had a few opportunities thus far and just have not put the ball in the basket. One of Bailey's best games of the year was a month ago against Asheville in their six-point win down in Spartanburg. Alves called for the foul there. See there, bad closeout there. Bailey understanding that Burgess was low on that closeout and was able to get to his pocket and knock down that shot. Bailey, one of two upstate starters in the Big South Hall freshman team. Into Pember, who fakes it, takes it. Rebounded by Alves. And Nick Alves does a really good job of just setting good screens, rebounding the ball, keeping the ball alive for his team. Swiss Army knife. Ganey for the lead. Got it! 
talked to. It was only a matter of time, right, for the Spartans to get themselves into an offensive rhythm. Right now, they are clicking. Their offense is running very fluid in this first half. Eight-nothing run that Burgess tried to squelch, but he's rejected at the rim. What a beautiful closeout from Bailey on Tejon Jones. Deep three wouldn't go for Pember. Asheville has not scored in five minutes, John. Yeah, and a lot of that is upstate is definitely playing to their assignments. They're playing Tejon Jones close, blanketing him for him not to get touches. And when he does catch it, they're all under him. They're going to call Njai over the back. See there, he cannot go under the handoff against Jordan Gainey. That's a great block from Sinny Enjai. Oh my goodness, this is what the guy does. He is the ultimate rim protector. He's looking for you to get the ball in the air. He doesn't block early. He lets it get in the air and then takes it out. Not a big score, but a very valuable post, especially at the defensive end for the Spartans. Ember battling for position, and he was fouled. Yeah, Alves tugged him down, and the senior from Melbourne, Melbourne, Florida, picks up his second. He's got to bring him down because if they can hit Pember for that duck in, he is dunking it, and then that serves as a momentum starter for UNC Asheville. Drew Pember broke the Asheville single-season scoring record this year, surpassing Andrew Rousey. Tejon Jones, meanwhile, the all-time leading scorer in the history of the program. But unsuccessful that time at the rim. Scoring drought continues for the Bulldogs. Ganey's the guy that Upstate wants to have the ball in his hands, especially late in the shot clock. And late in the time. game. Rebound tipped out, but A.B. chases it down. A.B. pull up. Bailey the other way. Attacking Pember and scores. That was smart for Bailey to go right into Pember's chest and knowing that he had some guys trailing him with Kadarius Smith who could clean up the boards if he missed that shot. I love how they've attacked Pember, who's playing with the one early foul. Doesn't want to get the second. Open look for Drew. Cash. That's too much daylight for Drew Pember. Definitely a guy that has struggled to get downhill today based on the space that they're giving him, but also a reading and assessing bad closeouts, taking advantage of that. He scored 20-plus points 17 times this year. He scored 40-plus twice including a 48-point McNugget against Presbyterian on January the 25th, the highest-scoring game for any individual in D1 college basketball this year. Oh, what a take! Trey Broadnax gets it to go. Great way to contort his body to get to his shot. I mean, that is a tough finish for Broadnax. Pember to the basket. Yes! There is absolutely nothing you can do with that. Drew Pember is wielding his team to get back in this game by being on attack mode. Pember was two for six. A couple possessions later, he's four for eight. He's got ten points and three rebounds. I'm telling you, it happens like that all the time with Pember, where he's quiet for a quick second, and then all of a sudden will erupt for ten straight points. Biggest difference from yesterday, though. He hasn't shot a free throw yet. Bailey thought he was fouled. Officials did not concur. Pember the trailer. On the attack, knocks a man over, oh and my slams goodness. it in! Oh my goodness! Look Ruth out down, down below! There's bodies on the floor. It's so disrespectful how he did that. You look at Mike Morrell is in the middle of the floor saying, take on to whatever's close by you. I can tell you that Evan works out. He does push-ups. I grabbed his arm. That's very generous. Do you do push-ups? Not really. Oh, okay. That's just natural? That's all you, bro? All natural. Oh, man. Natty. Throw a lot of frisbees. That's basically There you it. go. That's what it is. That works on the bicep, right? Oh. Or, or do you do the... The forehand. The forehand. Yeah. Okay. Cool. The flip. Anyway. Yeah, you, you were like a hold-me-back slam dunk judge after that. Drew Pember attack. 
There's a rebound for Drew. Two-point lead. Pembers got 13. Loose ball. Last touch by Ganey. We were chatting during the break, John. The fact that Pember made those two threes, just the closeouts are coming a little bit harder, and that opened things up in the lane. It opens up his straight line drive. He is good at straight lines because of his ability to shoot the ball. What that also means is we saw Drew Pember shoot a lot of free throws last game, and so you're seeing how Upstate is playing him. They're trying to play defense without fouling, but he's also showing the capability of getting to the basket and scoring without getting to the line. Beat his man off the dribble there, too, but lost the ball. Brodnax for three. What a half he's having. 11 for Trey Brodnax. And the Spartans retake the lead. That's a scary sign for Upstate if he is shooting the ball from the perimeter. He's already good at getting downhill, but if he can show his ability to knock down the three consistently, it puts a lot of pressure on the guard play of UNC Asheville to have to stop him. Pember attacking on the dribble, and the foul will be called on Goodloe. Actually gave it to Smith, not Goodloe. Smith's first. See Brodnats getting into a rhythm three off the open floor situation there. He is not necessarily a three-point shooter. He is a playmaker, but if he can show his ability to shoot the three on top of what he does when he gets downhill, he's going to be a scary player. So Pember's racking up the points. Meanwhile, correct myself, Smith just picked up his second foul. So that's four different Spartans that have two fouls apiece. Smith, Alves, Rideau, and Njai. And you saw, you said Smith and Njai, who are players that can defend the paint, defend the post. And the reason why they're in foul trouble right now is because of that guy, that free throw line, putting a ton of pressure on the paint. 15 first half points for Pember. And it feels like he's barely broken a sweat. Yeah, and the thing is, is that Upstate understands that Drew Pember is going to do Drew Pember things. What they have to make sure that, that they continue to do is contain the other players that can serve as offensive weapons for UNC Asheville. Brodnax is 5 for 5 from the floor. Trying to back down Burgess. Tough shot, won't go. Rebounded and stuck back up and in. Langley the finish after the hustle play from Goodlow. Mr. Goodlow is that guy, that Swiss Army knife. Kind of like the facilitator, but does all the little things to get the team involved. Right there, you see him making that hustle play. Burgess comes up well short. Gady tipped out by Langley. And loose ball, Spartans have it, making all the hustle plays. Langley at the rim. Battle shaken up for Asheville. That's why we've got the whistle. Might have been because the ball was thrown back off him. Yeah, saw Brodnax go and apologize. What yeah. a wild sequence. Yeah, he got hit. He got hit pretty good in the midriff. Ooh. Ooh. Poor fella. Alves. Uh, battle. Needs a minute. Maybe two. Give it to him. Okay. He'll be on the bench. Recuperating. Burgess. Jones. McMullen. A.B. and Pember. McMullen rejected, but follow is good for Jones. What a block by the Spartan defense, but Jones was right there. That's what UNC Astro is going to have to do. They're going to have to crash the boards right now. You are seeing Upstate do a great job of stopping UNC Astro on their first initial shots. It was good no foul defense from Pember. Mike Morrell screaming for a foul on that battle inside. Going to work, McMullen. Now he gets the whistle. This is the pressure that Asheville can put on you. Stressing your defense. They play physically. They pull down it. 
And, you know, that's just a product of a kid that believed in himself, wanted the opportunity to be able to showcase what he can do, went to the right place, and it's all about placement. All right? You going to a certain place may not be beneficial for you based on the scheme of play, but he found Mike Morella. They found each other, and it's been a great matrimony thus far. Tied at 27. It's our third tie. We've had seven lead changes. Been a fascinating back-and-forth battle. One for two for Nick McMullen. A Murray State flavor today. McMullen spent time at Murray State. We'll see Shane Nichols, the acting head coach of Radford. Spent a long time with the Racers. Open look. Broadnax buries it. Defensive breakdown there for the dogs. And Upstate is a different type of team when Broadnax is showing his ability to spread the, pl the floor. There's been times where teams have played him with space and going under the screens. Right now, he is serving as a major threat. Amber missed it from the wing. Ganey grabs the rebound, his first of the day. Spartans by three with under three to play in the half. That ball deflected into the backcourt. Pursued legally by Ganey. Nashville's throwing a lot of different bodies at Ganey. They're throwing, they're throwing length with Tayshawn Jones. They're throwing quick, quickness with Fletcher Aby. But you see here, Broadnax showing his ability to spread the floor and taking a little bit of that pressure off of a Jordan Ganey who can get free if you play individual defense on him. Foul is on McMullen. His second. So he's on the bench now. Pember close to his second right there. Offensive foul is the call. So if Pember has artistically played this since his first to avoid picking up his second. Well, yeah, that's the thing, and that's what makes him a unique defensive player of the year. He can guard multiple positions. You saw there, he moved the puppies, got to the right place, and made sure that he stayed firm to take that charge from Langley. He, he's got the basketball IQ and understanding that this game becomes a totally different thing if he's got two fouls in the first half. Absolutely. Especially with two minutes and 34 seconds left on a back and forth game. He's going to be needed on the floor, especially offensively. Battle all the way. That's what Doc Battle brings to the table. You got a shooter on his right side. He can get downhill with limited help and able to get to his spot and pivot and finish. Doc had a good game yesterday. Nine points in the win over Charleston Southern. And a reaching foul is going on Jones. And that's Tejon's second. Yeah, Tejon Jones has really tried to put a ton of pressure on the guard play of USC Upstate by staying locked and connected to those guards coming off of those zoom actions and chases. 16 foul for Asheville. Two minutes to play in the half. Bulldogs, the top seed, trying to get back to the NCAA tournament. Last went in 2016. Tough fadeaway. Beats the buzzer. Mr. Goodlow, welcome. That's what Mr. Goodlow brings to the table. That, that spark that you're not expecting, but is definitely capable of it. All the way, up and under, no good. Battle could not convert. Broadnax with momentum, circles the wagons, and Ganey had a heel on the sideline. Out of bounds to Asheville. And a well-played first half. That's only the third upstate turnover. Asheville only has four turnovers in the first half, though, so far. Yeah, both of these teams have done a good job of, you know, protecting the ball and making sure that they're not getting sped up. And that's why you're seeing some high-octane offense on both ends. Battle to the corner. Tejon Jones. Rebound for Broadnax. Tejon Jones hasn't gotten many looks, but there you see him have the ability to get himself some daylight. They give him a timeout. Yep. Yeah. Timeout taken by Mr. Goodlow. Mr. Goodlow is going to be a coach one day, understanding the importance of this possession. 
Also, first half highlights and stats on the semifinal Saturday. The men take the stage first, and then we'll see the women later tonight. Tremendous day of basketball here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Final minute of this first half. In both regular season meetings between these two teams, Upstate held a lead at halftime. Yeah, Upstate is definitely running their stuff and not feeling sped up. Not that time for Broadnax. Burgess pulls down the rebound. Rebounds are dead even, 17 apiece. About an eight-second differential between the game and shot clock here. It's been an entertaining game so far. Both of these teams have executed well. Battle inside between Pember and Goodlow. And Mista has been ticketed with the foul. Pember slow to get up. Got to make sure we get some, some towels down there. First on Goodlow, but it's the 11th team foul on Upstate. Fourth and fifth free throw attempts of the game for Drew. He was 22 for 24 yesterday. Now three for four today. Worth mentioning, 18 of his 24 free throw attempts yesterday came in the second half. Yeah, he's a guy that can definitely come alive in the second half, especially when he's had maybe a bad first half. And he has not had a bad first half at yeah, all. Yeah, so that means that we could be on par for another 40-point game where we've seen him come alive in two halves and just be terrifying for the opposing team. If you're Dave Dickerson, you're content taking the lead to the locker room. You'd love to double the lead right here, though. Final seconds. Good low to Langley. Missed it. Pember the rebound, and the buzzer sounds here in Charlotte. The regular season champs knew that they might see Upstate in the semis, and the Spartan team continued. Jones averages about 15 points per game. He only has two at halftime. And the thing about Tayshawn Jones is he's a guy that is capable of running off points very quickly once he sees the ball going to the basket. The thing is, is that Upstate has taken away the space that he's accustomed to getting to get into his rhythm. Second half begins with an Asheville turnover. Hember not on the same page with Burgess. Nashville did a really good job in the first half of taking care of the ball. Both teams did, and that's why you see the score as close as it is. I think back to early February. Upstate was on a four-game losing streak. They had Asheville coming to town. Asheville hadn't lost to many. Yikes. Unable to finish. Enjai with a loud miss. Abies open, comes up short. Enjai there for the board. So they beat Asheville to halt their four-game losing streak. And since that game, they've won seven of eight, only lost at high point, and they've just played good team basketball. Toughness, togetherness. They've made buckets, too. There's Surratt with his first deuce of the day. And we heard Dave Dickerson talk about his guys playing connected. That means so much in winning games for USC Upstate. You've got to have five guys all on the same page, offensively and defensively. No good for Jones. He's one for six which is exactly what Ganey was in the first half. Gives this one up. Both teams have come out pretty cold to begin the second stanza. And we should mention, it is pretty cold in this Coliseum. You can sort of feel the ice from the rink that's underneath the court as Pember will get to the free throw line. We certainly feel it sitting here courtside in our suits. You think the players feel it as well out in the hardwood? I don't know about that. At this point, the adrenaline is going. It doesn't matter where you play, uh, but it's how you feel afterwards. I do know that my joints are achy right now, and that is usually when it's cold around. Hmm. 
my kneecaps, they're tingling. I mean, I know what time it is. You've detonated on, on those knees to slam dunk. They've got a lot of years on them. Many times. They've got a lot of years on them at this how, point. How old were you, John, when you first threw it down on a 10 foot hoop? Seventh grade. And I was 13 years old. Wow. Yeah. You remember exactly where that moment occurred? Yeah, it was my dad telling me that I couldn't dunk. Stop telling people you can dunk, and then I did it. But what did dad say? Just had to, like, you're supposed to do that. <laughs> That's fantastic. Pember makes two at the line. Now, Drew has an advantage in terms of dunking the ball that you don't have. He's six foot 11. Yeah, yeah, I got it. It takes me a little bit more time <laughs> to get up there. But anyone who remembers watching you make highlights for Eddie Beaton Box Asheville teams, it was a sight to behold. Corner three won't go, rebounded by Jones. Burgess with a skip to his step. Pember filling the lane. Rebound pulled down by Smith. And Surratt did a really good job of altering that shot and making Pember have to go to the other side of the rim to finish. Shot clock's down to 10 here. Ganey, tough shot. Jordan Ganey is, is a magician with that ball. When he gets downhill and recognizes the defender is a little bit late, he can pull up on the drop of a hat, knock down that pull up at a high percentage. 19 of his 25 yesterday came after halftime. Just three points in the first half today. Will we see another strong second stanza for Ganey? Free throws coming here for Asheville. And you see Ganey just ripping, getting to his spot, recognizing that he had a slight advantage over Fletcher Aby, who did a really good job of defending, but Jordan Ganey does a better job of making it a tough mid-range jumper. Ganey, the first Spartan to be first team all Big South since they joined the league. Michael Buchanan was first team all Atlantic Sun in 2017. McMullen at the line for Asheville. Ganey's a special player. Led the league in steals. Fifth in the league in scoring. Double figures 24 times in 30 games. And the shot of the month so far across the college basketball so far, it's, universe. It's too early, but so far, I'm giving it to Jordan Ganey. This going to be the third on Jones, or do they have Burgess? It's Caleb Burgess picking up his first. And that's a relief for UNC Asheville where Tajon Jones gets that third foul. It can really do something to the lineup of UNC Asheville. First free throws of the day for the Spartans. And while we have a moment, you know, obviously you're an Asheville alum. You were coached by Eddie Biedenbach. Nick McDevitt, who took over for him, was an assistant, played for him. Yeah. Then he goes to Middle Tennessee. Mike Morrell comes in. What was your first impression of Mike Morrell when he was introduced as the new leader of the Bulldogs? Well, Mike Morrell actually called me in to a restaurant called Five Guys in <laughs> Asheville, North Carolina. Not Five Guys, um, Five Points. I'm okay. sorry. Five Points. This is a breakfast place. And we sat down, and he explained to me the vision that he saw for UNC Asheville. And it's going to be ugly. Um, day in and day out to get UNC Asheville back to its prominent play. And, you know, he's definitely responded to that promise. That's cool. Yeah. You didn't know him at all before then, did didn't you? Didn't know him at all. And, uh, yeah, he reached out to me and a couple of other locals that lived, uh, that were alumni and, you know, just wanted to introduce himself. It's got to mean a lot. Ganey rebounds the miss from Pember. Bulldogs 25 and 7. But the season on the line today. Pember the block. Loose ball taken by McMullen. Here comes Burgess, the conference's leader in assists. McMullen behind the back, and Pember with a flush. And McMullen with the pretty pass to Drew Pember for that slam. 
Upstate has really tried to make sure that they blanket Pember and make it tough for him to get catches there. Already with 20.7 rebounds on his way to a double-double. Kick to the corner. Three in the air. Won't go for Surratt. But a heck of a rebounding play made by Langley. And Langley working extremely hard to give another opportunity for Upstate to put the ball in the basket. Double team on Ganey, so it's over to Bailey. Shot clock at six. Bailey to the bucket for two. What a tough finish from Justin Bailey. Just a tough, strong, great size guard there. But Tejon Jones answers for three. Better shot from Tejon Jones. Just finding some open daylight in the open floor. And a lot of that is because UNC Asheville got down the floor as quickly as possible. Tejon Jones now one for four from beyond the arc. He's hoping to get to 2,000 points this month. Ganey too strong. Pember rips away his eighth rebound. Jones hits the trailer. Pember to the basket. A lot of contact. Is it a block or a travel? It's a foul on Upstate Surratt. Yeah. Tough call. Tough call, but something's got to be made there. Five minutes. Bulldogs are 13 and one this year. And Pember's 14 double doubles. It's impressive. It's been a really good 25 minutes of basketball. Oh, 15 yeah. 15 minutes to go. Just great high octane offense from both sides. Whistle on the Jones three. And Pember landed on his tush inside. And the foul is on Ganey. So it's going to be Bulldogs ball underneath. It's the first on Ganey. Watch inside. Again, Ganey in a situation where he was about to be a mouse in the house, and he said, not I. You're not allowed to do that in basketball. And it would be holding if it was in football. Pember! And Drew Pember, you can see the Upstate fans are one of the a steps called there. Still upset, throwing some boos at the refs. Oh, good defense in the corner. Battle got a piece of the shot. Battle in transition, hangs in the air and lays it in. Doc Battle getting it done on both ends of the floor. You saw there, he had the guard too. He had the stunt, then get to the recovery to guard Ganey at the corner three and was able to contest that shot. Doing a really good job on both ends. Broadnax open. Rebounded inside, and Langley will shoot two. Fouls on Caldwell. You see Doc Battle running the floor after a great defensive stop, contorting his body in between two to finish strong. Doc Battle played sparingly as a freshman, has really blossomed. Eight points a game as a sophomore, a junior. Solid role player off the bench. Nashville knew, to, uh, knew they'd need something from their bench today when you consider what Upstate's bench has meant to their team. Oh, fine. Langley wants that one back. He's got one more. Seven nothing run for Asheville to take their first lead of the second half. Their first lead since it was 22 to 20. One for two. Yeah, I mean I don't know. That ball must have went in his hand wrong. They're gonna make an air ball like that. It, Langley is usually good at at least touching some iron. <laughs> One point game. Burgess rejected by Alves, and it was off Burgess out of bounds. What a defensive play by Nick Alves. Nick Alves, definitely that guy that can guard multiple positions. He can guard guards, he'll guard the post, puts a lot of pressure on both ends of the floor. Type of guy you need in a game like this. 
A little bit loose on the dribble, but Goodlow maintains possession. Cross court for Alves. Langley double teamed. Cross lane pass, and wow, it's going to be Asheville ball. Physical defense. They're letting them play. Yeah, a lot of contact there. Bulldogs have made four of their last five shots. Field goal percentage up to 39% for the game. Pember fakes it, kicks it. Burgess circles the wagons, hits the diving Pember, and he travels. And this is where Caleb Burgess, not willing to shoot the three, can serve as a hindrance. Everybody was guarded except for him. In those situations, he's wide open. He's got to at least take the shot to show the ability that he is a threat. Five for 18 from three in the regular season. 31 games. He scored in double figures in both games in the regular season against Upstate. 14 in the win, 10 in the loss. Shot the ball well, too, 11 of 13. Brodnax having his way. Yeah, Brodnax understanding, recognizing that the defender did not, was anticipating the ball screen, was able to reject and get to a good shot. Officials continue to let the teams play through some substantial contact. Coach Dickerson wants everybody to calm down. Langley. Surprised they're doubling down on him? No. The guy is really a matchup nightmare. Corner three. Good! Justin Bailey! And that double team creates a lot of pressure where you got a wide open Justin Bailey who's weak side man had to sink and seal. He's wide open in the corner for that three. Langley does not have an official assist, but he's shown he can pass out of the double team. Pember, Bulldogs back within one. And that's what Drew, Drew Pember does. He answers all of the questions that you may have out here. Responding the right way with 25 points. Three for six from deep. Eight for 15 from the floor. Broadnax sets up Alves. Battle for the rebound. You see the hustle. It'll be Asheville ball. Two teams committed to leaving everything out on the floor. Dreaming of dancing. And Arena Biancardi was in the huddle. What you got, Kat? Inside coach Mike Morell's huddle. He said, guys, we got to do a better job of finishing plays. We can't stop because USC Upstate is a team that's not afraid to get on the floor and really fight for the ball. So we have to do a better job of just making sure that we're completing our plays on both ends of the floor. Mike Morell was exceptionally frustrated about something there. Almost like he was gesticulating toward the Asheville band for playing when they were coming up the court, but I'm not sure if that's what he was angry about. I'm pretty sure that's not what it is. It had to be something regarding on the floor activity. Something he just talked about. Maybe they didn't oblige. Beautiful pass. Nick Mullen detonates at the rim. Nick Mullen. Exploding for a big time finish that the Asheville Bulldogs definitely needed to get themselves on some type of momentum, some type of run. Mullen at six yesterday, he's got eight today. On the drive, just like that, Nick Alves puts Upstate back in front. Yeah, Nick Alves, great job of Euroing by. Drew Pember and finishing with the inside hand. Nice move for a guy who hadn't scored yet in the game. First two for Alves. Goodlow trying to defend Pember. Langley doubles out to Jones. Rebound McMullen. Caldwell takes it. Two dodge bullets there. And here comes Upstate led by Goodlow. Two high percentage shots for UNC Asheville from two of the better shooters on this team. Into the fourth quarter of this semifinal, and Upstate gets two more from Alves. Alves just picking up and taking what's given to him. He's been given the wide open shot. He's had to take it. Pember 
missed the potential equalizer, but another offensive rebound for Nick McMullen. McMullen's really fighting hard on those boards. Carry violation called on Caldwell. That's two possessions where Asheville had multiple chances and could not cash in after McMullen offensive boards. And Kat talked about that. Like seeing the play through and finishing those plays, those are winning plays that the Bulldogs have to make. Wonder if Mike Morrell's having any similar thoughts to what Griff Aldrich was experiencing over on that bench yesterday. No, no, you're not seeing as much of a a breakdown from personnel as you saw with Longwood, where you could definitely see the stress and desperation early. You're right, just a three-point game. Although Alves finally missed one. Pember, one rebound shy of a double-double now. He's got 25 and nine. Burgess to the corner for A.B. Another miss, another offensive board. Can Asheville finally cash in a second chance bucket? Reaching foul going on Langley. That's the second on Amir Langley. The sixth team foul on Upstate. Burgess trying to play through it. Lang legs out. Smith's back in. 6'8 Smith will try to chase around the 6'11 Pember. Burgess. Wide open. AB. Jones, another offensive rebound, and finally the Bulldogs put it in. And Asheville, even though the shot has not gone in to their liking from the perimeter, they're keeping the ball alive and getting more possessions so that they can get themselves into some type of offensive rhythm. Back to a one-point game. McMullen meeting Alves. And he fouled him. Third foul on McMullen. Alves did a good job recognizing Pember beat him to the spot, used the spin move, and then tried to ward off McMullen's verticality. So just the fifth and sixth free throw attempts for Alves and Upstate here. First trip to the line for Nick. As a team this year, Upstate was not one of the better free throw shooting squads in the league. 65.6% for the season. And the Big South semis for the second year in a row. They're trying to get to the Big South final for the first time. They haven't played in a conference championship game but one time. 2015 A Sun final. Lost a close game against the Osprey of North Florida. But they have a Big South championship game within reach. Up three, 8-10 to go. Pember ditches, McMullen fouled. Ganey got him on the head. Number two on Jordan Ganey. Knows those situations. I think that's a smart foul from Jordan Ganey. Um, and making sure that, he, that McMullen didn't make the layup. Now, if you're McMullen, you got to make that layup. John, how surprised are you by the fact that Jordan Ganey has five points, two of nine, and his team's still ahead with 8.07 to go? Well, I called the game when Asheville and Upstate played at UNC Asheville, and he had a very similar game where all he needed was about two minutes, and he erupted for like 10 straight points. Yeah. And so you can never close the door on a Jordan Ganey. Uh, when I was watching the game against them against Gardner Webb, you couldn't close the door on Jordan, Jordan Ganey, even when you thought the game was done. And so he's the type of guy that if you let or fall asleep on him, he will get going quick and in a hurry. Broadnax has been the top scorer for the Spartans. 16 points and 7 of 11 shooting. Ganey with 9. Mano Imano with Burgess. Rebound tipped and controlled by Jones out of the perimeter. 
Tajon Jones going to work. Tajon Jones puts it in. Tajon Jones using that hesitation because of how deadly he is from the three-pointer. Was able to get downhill and finish. He's got nine points now. He's 49 points away from 2,000 in his incredible career. His 147th game today as a Bulldog. Brodnax missed it. Battle the rebound. Bulldogs can take the lead. Burgess for Jones. And a good defensive rebound and a foul called as Ganey went up high and McMullen bumped him. And that's the fourth personal on Nick McMullen. The plot thickens. He for grabs here at the Bowflex. Yeah, you can definitely see the energy in both of these teams and how that how much they want this game, how much they want to win it. Everybody's on the floor. Everybody's fighting for second chances. They're trying to execute their stuff and trusting them system. I mean, it's not overly exaggerating to say winning this game could redefine your legacy as a player. Absolutely. These next six minutes and 40 seconds could completely change how you're regarded for the rest of your career. Kadarius Smith. Kadarius Smith has been quiet today, but he is very efficient when he can get to finishing over his right shoulder for that hook shot. Over the top, Pember, the catch, the double, the foul. Andrew Pember is going to go back to the line here. He has already set the record for most free throws made in the history of a single Big South tournament. Made 22 yesterday. He's got six so far today. Gardner Webb's Jerome Hill, who was a load playing for Tim Graff last decade. The great, great player for the running Bulldogs. Alongside Tyrell Nelson. And those are fun Gardner Webb teams, but Drew Pember making a name for himself in this conference. Two for two for Drew. 27 for the game. A lot of time still to play. Tied at 54. He's also one rebound away from a double double. It'll be his 15th of the year when he gets it. Broadnax can't finish. Rebounded by Battle. Bulldogs trying to push with numbers. And the trailing defender, Broadnax, nearly snuck in and stole that pass. He's, he's wily. Pember shoots it over Broadnax and scores. You've got to get a hand up or something. But at this point, because of Pember's ability to put so much pressure on the paint, Brodnats did not want him to drive on him. 30 points for Pember. Timeout, upstate. Drew Pember doing Drew Pember things, taking over the game when the fourth three of the game to break the tie moments ago. You know, Drew Pember has definitely come alive. I mean, he's. Not like he was asleep in the first half either, but in the second half, based on the situation in the moment where his team is needed to find some type of circulation offensively, it's been him as the go-to. He had 29 yesterday. He's got 30 and counting today. Shot clock winding down for Dave Dickerson Spartans. Broadnecks. Rebounded by Jones. Ahead to Pember, going baseline. Pretty good job by Goodlow standing up, and an incredible catch by Abel to maintain possession. Battle, and one! Doc Battle being a man down there. Get into his spot, using the pump fakes, waiting for the defender to get up in the air. Going into their chest and finishing strong. You see Fletcher Abey with the acrobatic ball to keep it alive, and Right there, Doc Battle going right in the Kadarius Smith's chest. In Ultimate Frisbee, we call that a greatest. What A.B. just did, kind of jumping out of bounds to save possession. Throwing it back into a teammate and then Battle, as you said, showing the strength. 
Coach Mike Morrell loves Fletcher A.B. for that very reason. He makes winning plays to keep the ball alive during pivotal moments. That was needed and necessary for the Bulldogs. That is Fletcher A.B. in a nutshell. This matches the largest lead of the game for either team. It's been a two-possession game from tip-off to the present. I think both of these teams knew that it was going to be a dog fight no matter what. Goodlow comes up short. Burgess clears it away. Asheville has a plus six advantage on the boards in the second half. Caleb Burgess has six rebounds there. Definitely being one of those guards that can also clean up the boards. And they got Goodlow for the bump on Jones who will shoot two. With 4.17 to play. You see here, look at all that attention on Drew Pember. Everybody's worried about him watching and forgetting about Tajon Jones on the slip. He gets to the line. Jones in the double figures. At the start of today in college basketball, John, there were 24 players, active players, with at least 2,000 career points. Tejan Jones is now 48 points away from joining that company. If he can get there between today, tomorrow, and what's beyond. Yeah, it's all about advancing for him to reach another individual accolade, but in order for that to happen, UNC is going to have to collectively come out of here with a win. Four minutes to go. Back door. Good little block. And shoot two after we get a timeout. That's the second on Pember. Our strength. All right. Two free throws here for Mr. Goodlow, the senior out of R.J. Reynolds High School in Winston-Salem. It's a good school. Had some real good players out of there. One comes to mind, I think, Rishon Terry. Yeah. It, yeah. Right around the corner from the Leppler residence, if you're wondering. Yeah. Pember has the double-double. 30 and 10. His 15th dub-dub of the year. And a couple costly missed free throws from Mista. And we marquee, you know, this second half with Pember and Brodnats going at it a little bit. And Brodnats has really fallen off a little bit in this second half, only scoring two points in the second half. Shot clock winding down from 38 feet. Would have been good from 34. Yeah, 34 online. Double comes on Langley again to Brodnats. Nashville doing a nice job defensively, although Bailey's open, and that's a huge bucket. Justin Bailey, when the Spartans needed him. Yeah, running off of a set of staggers, just making sure that he was available. A.B. tried his best, scrambled with, with like his life depended on it, but Bailey was just way too open. Interesting matchup here in the mismatch. Burgess with the speed on Langley. Pass deflected, though, and Langley wins the battle. Key possession here for Upstate. Keep themselves into this Oh, thing. what a fine Langley to finish. Dish from Goodlow, and it's back to a two-point game. Yeah, and you knew that Upstate was going to come out with a big push after the media to try to get themselves back in this game. And they have done that by playing sound defense, stepping up the physicality on both ends of the floor. Pember explodes to the rim, can't finish too strong. Goodlow makes a move on A.B. Rebounded by Al, uh, excuse me, by Battle. That's as good of a situation as you can get if you are USC Upstate. Yes, indeed. Timeout, Mike Morrell. Buck 55 to go. After this timeout, each team will have two timeouts left. Coach Morrell and the Asheville Dogs are expected to win this game. But that doesn't mean it's easy. It doesn't. There's so much parity in this league. 
and teams are constructed to be able to beat each other. And so right now, UNC Asheville, Upstate, two teams that are very similar and are definitely putting their gifts on display. Hember with 10 to shoot, kicks it for Burgess for three. Yes! We talked about Caleb Burgess having to show his ability to spread the floor in order to keep Upstate's defense honest. Just his sixth three all season. Brodnax lost the ball, Jones has it. And Burgess is a stat stuffer, doing a bit of everything. He's got six rebounds, he's got four assists, and now he's got five points. Big, big bucket. And now Asheville can take us under a minute. And Langley fouls Pember. I think they got Amir. Yes, indeed. This will be two shots for Pember. And here you see Pember drawing two as he normally does, and Burgess making Upstate pay. Look at that Asheville bench launching the arrows. And I think the excitement is also because Burgess does not try to take a lot of threes right. for the Bulldogs. But there, you saw he knew that his team needed him to be able to do that to create offensive balance. The senior out of Moravian Prep, transfer from Hofstra, 110 games. That's his 30th three. And it doesn't happen all that often. Now look. Upstate was down five with ten seconds to go and found a way to win. So they got tons of time. They, they do not mind this situation. One thing is you can't let that man get free. You know who? Jordan Gady. It's like he was it's like he was thinking, Sam, what I was thinking here. It's wild. Like this guy really can score. You're just listening, and then you gotta go out there and just do. One thing about Upstate, they've been good in close games all year long. They're 9-3 and three in games decided by six or less for the season. You can definitely tell they practice situational circumstances in practice all the time to make sure that they're ready for moments like these. Caleb Dr Burgess yo-yos the dribble. Makes a move all the way. Burgess missed it. And Jones goes over the back and fouls Mr. Goodlow. Now Asheville had a foul to give. That's the sixth team foul. It's the third on Jones. And Upstate will have the basketball. And a chance to tie the game with 28.5 seconds left. That's it. Too much time, man. A lot of time right now for USC Upstate to get dangerous and everybody knows that they are capable of being dangerous out there. Here comes Trey Brodnax and Dave Dickerson's going to take his final timeout with 20.5 remaining. And at this point you want to make sure you drop just play solid defense. All righty. Rodnex will inbound, Ganey, Langley, Bailey, and Goodlow. Up top, Mr. Goodlow. Back to Trey Rodnex. Into the hands of Jordan Ganey. A.B. with a hand up. Ganey, tough shot, no good. Kick back out, but A.B. the steal. Seven seconds to go, and Upstate fouls. Free throws for Asheville coming up. You can tell Jordan Ganey was really upset there. Wanted some contact. Dave Dickerson's upset as well, saying that, hey, there's something. That's got to be something. And so, yeah, there's, a, there's elbow contact and everything. You see Dave Dickerson letting the refs know, like, hey. A.B. at the line. No good. Upstate's out of timeouts. Even on a make here, there's time if they can get a bucket in the next three, four seconds. To make it a two-possession game, the junior 
from Morganton, North Carolina. Got it. McMullen back in for battle. Now, if you're upstate, if you want to have a chance, you got to score in the next three, four, five seconds. And you got to make something happen. Broad next for three. No. Rebound tipped, and that will do it. Asheville survives and advances to the Big South title game. 66-62. Big.